coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Church, never get to the point where you begin to judge the achievements or the abilities of a supernatural God by the achievements of natural things. You can't do that. Don't put God and Satan and say they're on the same. God is the good one. Satan is the bad one. So in your mind, there are two gods, a bad God and a good God. What? What? Satan is under your feet. He was a created being. This is the creator. El Shaddai. Adonai. Jehovah is his name. Pantocrator is who he is. Almighty. Self-sufficient God. The one who is more than enough. The one who has freely given you all things to enjoy. That's who he is. Tacos, are you ready? This November, the Carpenters Church invites you to Oasis, a shift concert. Yes, meet the gospel music artist Libo Blaze with hit songs Jire and Desire. This Oasis, also featuring the music the phenomenal new wine choir of the Carpenters Church and introducing the Generation Shift Fresh Oil Choir. Comedy by Mudiaga and GSA. Live at the Carpenters Church, the Carpenters Drive, Ada George Road, Patakot on Saturday, November 11, 2023 at 4 p.m. Register at www.tcchurch.online to get your tickets. Registration is free. Secure your spot now. Oasis, a shift concert. Live at the Carpenters Church. See you there. Previously on Fresh Dew. You cannot negotiate with the enemy. You can't win. You are playing in his arena. Stay in the arena of faith. He won't enter. He can't function in that arena. Once you stay in the arena of faith, I come. I'm ready. He won't, he won't even enter the ring. He's scared. It is when you step out of the arena of faith and begin to dance in the arena of the negotiation and your intelligence, you're on his turf. We'll finish you there. Third one, let's look at this. Isaiah 36, verse 14. Thus says the king, Haraf Shakeh was speaking, speaking for his king. Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. Do not listen to Hezekiah. For thus says the king of Assyria, make peace with me by a present, and so on and so forth. Let's go through that quickly. Third strength stealer, shifting your trust to the enemy's camp. It's one thing to be afraid, it's another to now begin to doubt God's commitment. Well, if you doubt God's commitment, you're going to look for commitment somewhere else. Hello, hello. If you doubt God's commitment, you're going to look for an anchor and a covering somewhere else. If it's not God, it will be the enemy. You begin to shift your trust to 
is the enemy scam. Why are you trusting God? He can't help you. Come and make peace with me. The enemy. The enemy is the father of lies. He will continually call God and his word the liar. Anything he has to tell you, any lure and attraction he has for you to come over to him, he's calling God's word a lie. Bible says he's the father of lies. But he says God is not a man that he should lie. Who would you rather be following? Who would you rather trust? You know what it means to trust? We do that all the time. When I sit down on this chair, I've not tested this chair. I could very well sit down and have a global disgrace. But I trust that they will not give me a chair that will fall under me. But by my just doing this, I've shown trust. And it's held my weight. And I've sat down. But it could have collapsed and I would just land on the floor. Then what happens? If you trust someone, you give yourself to them. Wholeheartedly. Who are you giving yourself to? Do you trust God's word that says he has blessed you with every spiritual blessing? Do you trust God's word that tells you that the work of your hands is blessed? Or do you trust when you hear the exchange rate is a thousand and fifteen naira to a dollar? Do you believe that? Does that guide your thinking? Does that guide your actions? Do you say things you can do and you cannot do, not based on what God says you should do, but based on what the naira you have in your bank says you should do? That's what shows who you trust. What is motivating your actions? Do you trust Jehovah Rapha? Or do you trust that doctor? By the way, there's somebody who has some kind of a scan. While we were worshipping, I didn't forget that. I saw the scan come out clear. All clear. I just kept saying, it's all clear. So I don't know what the scan is. You have the scan schedules. You're online, you're here. Go to that scan. It's all clear. It's all clear. That was the word I received. It's all clear. Glory be to God. Do you believe such words? Do you believe what the scripture says? Or do you believe the detailed diagnosis you've been given? You must know how to listen to the doctors in one ear. If I have ear, and what I have is the word of God, if you get my point. You can't take hook, line, and sinker, and put your trust in. No, this is a professor of medicine. He has studied. He, he can't help you. See him, but carry your faith when you are going. Who do you trust? Is my question. The enemy only has lies. Church, only lies. Only lies. It's a lie. Anything he tells you is a lie. Lie. Hello, lie. A doctor did not create you. They will tell you you will die. You say yes. Why? How? Why should you die? For what? No, 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 but he said, shut up. What did the word say? Which do you believe? Who do you trust? That's really what it comes down to in our faith. Actually, what it comes is that simple. Who you trust, you are willing to give yourself to. And take the risk. What you trust, you won't fall. And you see one thing about the enemy? He will always paint the worst case scenario. He never paints a good picture. Doctors even do that. They're trained to give you the worst case to cover themselves. Isaiah 36 verse 12. I want to read it from the NLT. Listen to what the rapture case said. The people will become so hungry and thirsty that they will eat their own dung and drink their own urine. 
Why do you think he told them that? He told them that. If you don't do what we're telling you, your people will get to the point where they'll be eating poo-poo and drinking pee. Why? He wants to paint the worst case scenario to scare you. I've told my this story many times because of time. I can't go into it. But when a doctor told me with confidence, confidence that if I fly, I will die. He didn't just tell me how I will, that I will die. He told me how I will die. Described how my lungs, that song you sang, It's Your Breath in My Lungs, it was a, it was a drama song for me at that time of my life because my lungs were attacked. That song means a lot to me. So I, I just began, to, I, I learned that song then and that was a confession for me. It's his breath in my lungs. My lungs won't fall apart. The doctor said, your lungs are so bad that if you attempt to fly, they, you will just, they will die, you will die slowly. The thing will be tearing, tearing. I didn't know lungs used to tear. The tear from your chest cavity just be tearing. So even if they give you oxygen, that place that's torn, doesn't even be leaking. Oxygen, will, yes, one of your doctor, that explaining to you, a good doctor. Worst case scenario, lie. And like I told, I've told my story many times. He made the mistake of telling me when I go up there, nobody will be there to help me. Ah, God will not be in the sisters of it. Where, where did he miss? Someone that is higher than that. That's when I knew it was the enemy talking. And we flew. And I obviously I did not die because I'm still here. <laughs> But the authority with which he told me even described how we die. Worst case scenario. Madam, if you say this, this will happen to me. Madam, you cannot have children. You said your own. Who do you trust? Where is your trust? Is the question. And it's becoming increasingly difficult in these last days to trust God. So don't play with the word. When you see a word church, stay there. I came the other day. Pastor, I did not smile. If he didn't smile at you, it's okay. Just stay here. If the word is here, stay. It's the word will smile at you. Value the thing. Cherish what matters. You need the word now in these last days. It's getting darker. It's getting darker. It's only those with the word that will reject light. You can't be playing games. Going to churches where we are feeling good. But you are empty. Because when the pressure hits, you won't be able to stand it. And it's to keep hitting, but it's getting darker. To keep your trust in God's camp. When you shift your trust to the enemy's camp, your strength is stolen. Glory be to God. Are you getting something? The enemy will also offer you your rights as a gift. That's the worst part. That's insult. Isaiah 36 again, verse 16. I want to read it from the NLT. Please pay attention and listen and tell me what you hear here. Don't listen to Hezekiah. Rapture kept speaking. Okay, great. You've got the NLT. These are the terms. The king, terms. Enemy is giving terms. The king of Assyria is offering. Make peace with me. Open the gates and come out. Please listen. Then each of you can continue eating from your own grapevine and fig tree, and drinking from your own well. Hello. You are the enemy. You are giving me terms. In the terms, you are telling me to open my gate and come out. Meaning, number one, I have gates. Number two, it's closed and it's working. It's protecting me. You've got gates protecting you. Number three, if you're telling me to open it, it means you can't come in except I open it. What gate are you opening? He knows he can't come in. He's coming with terms and telling you to open your own gate. That means you have gate. And you are protected. There is a shield of faith, a shield of favor around you. But only you can open it and let him in. He has painted the worst case scenario to deceive you and tell you, open the gate now. Open. He can't come in. He can't come, he can't come in. He can't cross that line except you open the gate. By what you say, 
by what you do, by what you believe, by who you hang out with, open the gate. So when, when you open it, it says that you can drink from your own well. Own cake is your own. It was your own. He's giving you permission to drink from your own well. He's giving you permission to eat from your own field. Yes, he reached to do like this. Honestly, what belongs to you is not what the enemy does to believers on a daily basis. You enter strange relationships and strange partnerships because people have money. Remember, your father says the silver and gold belong to him. Your father says the cattle of a thousand hills are his. Your father, your papa, your father, your father, your own father. You think Dan Gote's son enters partnership for money? Why? Because his father has money. Dan Gote is but a drop in the pocket compared to God. You may not be Dan Gote's son, but your father is richer. Why would the enemy? As I know he's not really born again, but at least he works in a bank and I don't suffer from my power house. I cannot suffer from my power house. Which power house do you suffer in? Who be your papa? You've already shown me you don't know that God is your father. Isaiah 36, 17. And I'll arrange you. I'll arrange to take you to another land like this. Another land like this. Can you hear? Another land like this. Wait until the land where you did. Ask your neighbor, wait until the land where you did. You are in the kingdom of God. The enemy says, come. I will take you to another land where it resembles this one. Why, why are you using this one as a reference? Because this is the best land to be in. Nobody will make counterfeit 2,000 naira. There is no 1,000, 2,000 original. But they will make counterfeit 1,000. So why are you going to use counterfeit 1,000 when you have the original 1,000? What is he offering you that is like this? It's all compromise. It's all counterfeit. Last fear. Last strength stealer. So I told you that you, you must not shift your trust to the enemy's camp. Anything that you do not receive from God in God's way, write this down. Anything you do not receive from God in God's way, in correlation with his word, is a counterfeit. Anything you do not receive from God in God's way, in correlation with his word, the principles of his word, no matter how, look it, how good it looks, it's a counterfeit. A counterfeit and an original may look alike, but one is subject to destruction and the other is not. A counterfeit and an original may look alike. One is subject to destruction and the other is not. And the last strength stealer, I'll just mention this because of time. It's when now you begin to compare. You do, you, you do the insulting thing of comparing God with other gods. Isaiah 36, verse 20. Who among all the gods of these lands 
have delivered their countries from my hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem from my hand. What was he doing? He's comparing. He was comparing. Church, never get to the point where you begin to judge the achievements or the abilities of a supernatural God by the achievements of natural things. You can't do that. Don't put God and Satan and say they're on the same. God is the good one. Satan is the bad one. So in your mind, there are two gods, a bad God and a good God. What? What? Satan is under your feet. He was a created being. This is the creator. El Shaddai. Adonai. Jehovah is his name. Pantocrator is who he is. Almighty. Self-sufficient God. The one who is more than enough. The one who has freely given you all things to enjoy. That's who he is. The one who says that you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The one who has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. You cannot compare him with anything else. Kalima Tusakia, and he's your father. He's your father. He's your father. He is the source of your faith. He's the source of strength and wealth for you. He is the one that should have your focus. We do away with fear today in the name of Jesus Christ. I since drew a line in my life. Zero tolerance on fear. I don't even play with it as a joke. Fear will steal from you so fast. Lift up your hands. Worship you. Worship you. Worship you. Worship you. Take you. God has no abandoned projects. He doesn't abandon any of his children to the orphanage. Once you are his, you are his. He's fully committed to you. You can trust him. You can rely on him and rely on his word. His word is yea and amen. Everything you need is already done for you in Christ Jesus. Doesn't his word say all things are yours? Everything you need, every equipment you need, every resource you need to push out that baby is yours. How do I know that? Because Jehovah said so. He's not a man that you should lie. Nobody should be offering you what is already yours. Lord, may our eyes be opened. May there be an infusion of courage and boldness this evening in your people to resist the spirit of fear, to understand your commitment to them, to put their trust wholly in you, Lord. For your heart is here. I know it. Your heart is here. And those babies shall be born. In the name of Jesus, we plug all the holes where strength has been leaking from. We plug all the doubts where strength has been leaking from. We plug all the distractions that have taken our eyes off you. We rise up and we tell the enemy to get out. 
We no longer listen. But we exalt your word. And we listen to your word alone. And you will infuse your people with strength. For EDD has come. The day of birth is here. And it is not a day of rebuke. It is not a day of trouble. For you are giving us strength. And we are receiving strength. To push out those babies whole and healthy. For the benefit of your kingdom and to your glory. I see expansion here. According to your purpose, according to your blueprint, according to your plan, those babies are being born. We will nurture them with the strength you are giving us. And they will grow and grow and do exploits. We lift our hands and we worship you. Worship you. Worship you. Worship you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.